It's been one of the most dramatic implosions in retail. In December of 2013, the share price for Bed Bath & Beyond was about $80. By the summer of 2022, that number had collapsed over 90% to about $5. The decline of Bed Bath & Beyond share price, as well as its profitability, has raised serious questions about its continued existence. Bed Bath & Beyond really needs to figure out a way to exist in a world where consumers can order pretty much anything they want for their home from Amazon and have it within days. So, what happened to this once prosperous company for it to have such a dramatic fall in share value? And what might be next for the once pioneering retail giant? For decades now, Bed Bath & Beyond has been a fixture across North America, with locations in every state, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and Canada. What was unique to Bed Bath & Beyond is the individual store managers had a lot of autonomy to run their store to suit their particular customers' needs. So stores, they would order merchandise based on their local markets. It wasn't sort of this uniformity that you see in a lot of big chains and they could really customize their store to meet their local customer needs. The company helped pioneer the big box superstore format that competed with department stores and mass merchants. It really became known as the place to go if you needed anything for your home. Shoppers could walk in and just find anything from sort of oddball kitchen ga gadgets to bedding, to bath towels, to cookware, to Cuisinards. And they had a pilot high, let it fly philosophy where goods were literally piled sometimes all the way to the ceiling. And, you know, people just didn't really walk out empty handed. And on top of it, they had this 20% off coupon. So you could get name brand goods at a very good price. But after decades of strong sales, signs of weakness began to emerge in the late 2010s. Well, the problems really started just recently around 2018, 2019, after many, many years of rising sales, their sales fell, their profits evaporated. And it's a culmination of a lot of the changes we've seen in retailing with the shift to online shopping, competition from new players like Amazon and Bed Bath & Beyond had really fallen behind the times. They had not invested in their technology. Their online presence was slow and clunky. They just were not keeping pace with all the changes. In 2019, the company brought in a new CEO, Mark Triton, to turn things around. Mark Triton was a former Target executive. He ran their, uh, he was their chief merchant at Target for several years. And he came in with the strategy to really overhaul um, the whole company. Everything from decluttering the stores, adding more private label brands, uh, remodeling the stores, boosting the online presence you know, investing in systems and technology. He had a very wide ranging plan to try to bring the company more into the modern retailing era. In 2021, Bed Bath & Beyond reopened its flagship store in Manhattan's trendy Chelsea neighborhood. He added a lot of new private label brands very quickly. Brands like Nestwell for bedding and bath. And he added, you know, a lot for the kitchen area. And in so doing, he took out some of the national brands that shoppers really loved. But Triton was not successful. Not only did income continue to decline, but the company has also seen its debt pile up to unsustainable levels. Well, unfortunately, Mr. Triton was trying to make all these changes at a time of tremendous upheaval for retailing. The pandemic ushered in a host of supply chain challenges. First, there were product shortages, there have been shipping delays, uh, bottlenecks at overseas factories. It's made it very hard for retailers to get goods. And then once the goods arrived, consumer demand shifted. And now that goods are finally hitting stores, consumers are spending on other things like travel and entertainment and buying less of the home goods items that Bed Bath & Beyond sells. The global pandemic initially wreaked havoc on the retail sector. In 2020, lockdown shoppers steered clear of brick and mortar stores, which led to a spike in e-commerce. But as the lockdowns eased, consumer behavior normalized somewhat as shoppers returned to stores. Whereas retailers like Walmart and Target quickly adapted to capitalize on the returning foot traffic, Triton's strategy of adopting private label brands was hampered by supply chain bottlenecks. What's more, Triton's remodeling of the stores confused returning shoppers. They've been remodeling stores to give them wider aisles. They've taken out a lot of the clutter. The stores do look cleaner, but they're sort of anesthetized and they've lost that specialness. 
and loyal shoppers have really noticed the difference and they're not so happy about it. In July of this year, Triton was ousted. Currently, a board member is serving as interim CEO while the company searches for a permanent replacement. Ryan Cohen, the billionaire founder of Chewy.com, took a stake in Bed Bath & Beyond earlier this year and pushed for some changes, including separating its Bye Bye Baby chain. And the board is evaluating options for the Bye Bye Baby business, but they have not reached a decision yet. Things have gotten so bad that some analysts have suggested that bankruptcy is a possibility, given the rate at which the company is burning through its cash reserves. They're seeing sales decline you know, quarter after quarter, so they really need to pull consumers back into their stores. They need to figure out a way to uh, create a proposition that, you know, to make shoppers want to come and spend money there. In an email to the Wall Street Journal, a Bed Bath & Beyond representative wrote, we have a $1 billion asset-based revolving credit facility. Additionally, we have already taken actions on many fronts, including a reduction of at least $100 million of CapEx against the company's original plan. Additional measures are being pursued, and we are working with an external advisor, BRG, to focus on cash, inventory, and balance sheet optimization. The company will provide a further update at the end of next month.